Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 4th of September. India-Russia exchange 15 documents to boost bilateral cooperation. India-Pakistan failed to finalize agreement on Kartarpur Pilgrim Corridor. And UN envoy calls for end to violence in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who arrived on a two-day visit to Russia on Wednesday, met Russian President Vladimir Putin in the port city of Vladivostok. During talks, India and Russia agreed to strengthen ties on a wide range of sectors, including defence, space and energy exploration mission in the coming years. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in Russia's port city Vladivostok on Wednesday on a two-day visit at the invitation of Russian President Vladimir Putin to attend the Eastern Economic Forum meeting. Modi was given a guard of honour upon his arrival in Vladivostok. Prime Minister Modi later visited Vesta shipbuilding complex along with Putin and interacted with the management and workers of the shipyard. The two leaders later held delegation-level talks at the India-Russia 20th Annual Summit aimed at strengthening bilateral ties. Prime Minister Modi and President Putin also witnessed the exchange of 15 documents ushering in new areas of cooperation including connectivity, deep-sea exploration, space, energy, among others. <laughs> फ्री, ओपन और इंक्लूजिव इंडो पैसिफिक के कंसेप्ट पर भी उपयोगी चर्चा की। हम सहमत हैं कि साइबर सिक्योरिटी, काउंटर टेररिज्म, एनवायरनमेंट प्रोटेक्शन जैसे क्षेत्रों में भारत और रूस का सहयोग और मजबूत करेंगे। on his part, Putin said India is one of the key partners of Russia and the relationship between the two states is of strategic and special privileged nature. Modi, who will attend the Eastern Economic Forum, is the first Indian Prime Minister to visit the Russian Far East region. India and Pakistan have failed to finalize the Kartarpur Corridor Agreement due to differences on key issues, especially on the charging of fee from the pilgrims by Islamabad and presence of Indian diplomats. Despite soaring tensions, the two sides met on Wednesday for the third round of discussions on the draft agreement. The third round of talks on Wednesday between India and Pakistan on the Kartarpur Corridor failed to finalize the agreement on the visa-free cross-border pilgrim corridor due to differences on some key issues. India objected to Pakistan insisting on charging a service fee for allowing pilgrims to visit Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan and not allowing presence of Indian protocol officials. Pakistan has now invited the Indian side for a final meeting on its side of the border to resolve the remaining issues. Since this is our commitment to our people, pilgrims, that this will be a holy, uh, this will be free, this will, uh, this will be free of any charge. So we persisted with our request, but. I am uh, sorry to say Pakistan has shown extreme inflexibility on this issue and they have not accommodated our request so far. Pakistan has also shown its unwillingness to allow the presence of uh, protocol officials from India. Meanwhile, senior Indian Army official Lieutenant General K.J. S. Dhillo said on Wednesday that Pakistan is desperate to infiltrate maximum terrorists into the Kashmir Valley to disrupt peace in India's Jammu and Kashmir. He informed the army has arrested two Pakistani nationals who were trying to infiltrate a large group of lashkar e taiba terrorists into India through Jammu and Kashmir. Moving on. Days after India raised concerns over the protest outside the Indian High Commission in London on August 15th, there were fresh protests outside the building by Pakistani supporters on Tuesday. 
The Indian High Commission in UK confirmed that the protests by Pakistani supporters were violent and caused damage to the premises. The Indian High Commission in London was vandalized on Tuesday after a protest by Pakistani supporters over Kashmir issue outside the building turned violent. Confirming the violent protest, the Indian High Commission tweeted a photo of the damaged window pane of the building. Responding to the tweet, London Mayor Sadiq Khan condemned the violence, saying it was unacceptable. The protesters smashed windows of the Indian High Commission as they carried flags of Pakistan at Mr. Kashmir. The protests were organized against India's move on 5th of August to revoke Article 370 that gave special status to Jammu and Kashmir and bifurcate it into two union territories. Pakistan has been trying to internationalize the Kashmir issue, but several countries have called the move as India's internal matter. Uh, the changes of the uh, article of uh, the constitution is the entirely uh, the comes in the domain of the uh, that government. So we have no any uh, comment on uh, that decision. What what we are closely watching is uh, the implications. Uh, after those uh, decisions. Meanwhile, authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir have said 90% of the Kashmir Valley is now free from the reasonable restrictions which were imposed post the abrogation of Article 370. The UN envoy in Afghanistan, Tadamichi Yamamoto, said that violence across Afghanistan underscores the urgency of ending the conflict through a negotiated settlement. His statement comes in wake of latest Taliban attacks in parts of Afghanistan. The UN envoy in Afghanistan, Tadamichi Yamamoto, in response to latest attacks by Taliban, said that violence across Afghanistan underscores the urgency of ending the conflict through a negotiated settlement and the suffering of the Afghan people must end. Yamamoto, who heads the UN Assistance Mission in Afghanistan, or UNEMA, said in a statement released on Tuesday that the United Nations remain concerned about the harm caused to civilians by the impact of pro-government aerial and search operations. He called on all members of the international community to continue to help put an end to the violence and support the progress made in building the foundations for a stable and lasting peace. The Taliban claimed attack in Kabul on Monday caused more than 100 civilian casualties, most of them injured. Days earlier, Taliban assaults in Kunduz and in Baglan resulted in grave harm to the civilian population. There were scores of civilian casualties. Nepal's sole operating international airport, the Tribhuvan International Airport, will be closed for seven hours a day from September 8th for four months as the airport authority plans to renovate the aging taxiway. The move comes after the airport authority rehabilitated the runway in a similar manner from April to June. After completing the rehabilitation of the taxiway, it plans to operate the airport 24 hours a day from current 21 hours a day. As Nepal is organizing the Visit Nepal Year 2020 campaign, which aims to attract more than 2 million tourists, the officials have said the improvement at the airport is expected to facilitate the entry of foreign travelers. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar has called for the development of a regional cooperation structure to fight maritime pollution in the Indian Ocean region. The remarks were made at the Indian Ocean Conference held in Maldives. Indian Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar has called for the development of a regional cooperation structure to fight pollution and environmental degradation in the Indian Ocean region. Speaking at the 4th Indian Ocean Conference in Maldives on Tuesday, J. Shankar said all nations should work towards the cooperation structures which could help all to handle maritime pollution. Leaders from India, Sri Lanka, Singapore and Maldives on the last day of the conference also discussed marine ecology, terrorism and navigational security. We must work uh, towards developing our regional cooperation structures in a way that allows us to handle questions of maritime pollution, environmental degradation and sustainable exploitation of resources. This year's theme for the Indian Ocean Conference was securing the Indian Ocean region traditional and non-traditional challenges. According to a UN report, the coastal areas of the Asiatic subcontinent have started showing signs of deterioration. 
At a time when human activity is responsible for global warming and climate change, there are some people who continue to raise awareness about depleting forest cover. A man in India's northeastern Manipur province has replanted a forest and has made it his life mission to continue doing so. Forty-five-year-old Morangtam Loya from India's northeastern Manipur province has been protecting nature and advocating afforestation for several years. Loya has replanted Punchilok forest in 17 years. Today, the forest area covers 300 acres and is rich in flora and fauna. It is the home of 250 species of plants, 25 species of bamboo and a variety of birds and animals. As a child, Loya often visited the lush Krin Kobru Peak but years later, when he went back, the peak due to years of deforestation, forest fires and indiscriminate utilization of forest resources by villagers rendered it barren. Determined to bring the greenery back, Loya started looking for land to plant trees. His search guided by a local took him to Mari Langol Hill Range, the place where his efforts to build a forest took shape. After I finished my college, I went to Kobru again and uh, at that time it was uh, 1999 or 2000. Mm -hmm. I think um, then that time when I went there, there was no more huge, those trees were already all gone and only there because of the zoom cultivation and only peas and you know, like mm -hmm. uh, beans and all are growing and the huge uh, trunk of the huge trees were all charred and you know, mm -hmm. and it was, it really shocked me and uh, I, I really, I felt very, you know, hurt in, in, inside. Then I wanted to do something for this uh, nature and Mother Earth. Loya and his friends in 2003 established the Wildlife and Habitat Protection Society, which along with the volunteers look after the natural wealth of Funshilok Forest. To earn a living, Loya works as a pharmacist and does organic farming, but his lifelong mission is to plant more trees and continue creating more forest land. A four-day festival celebrating the culture and tradition of Ladakh began in India's northern Lay City with traditional mass dance performances. Ladakh was last month announced as a union territory by the government and vibrant festivals are religiously revered and popular in cultural tourism. A four-day festival celebrating the culture and tradition of Ladakh began in India's northern Lay city with traditional mass dance performances and music. The festival began on Sunday with locals taking out a procession across Lay city. Dressed in traditional attires with masks and headgears, monks and women entertained the audience that included tourists as well as locals with their dance on monastic instruments. The festival was inaugurated by Governor of Jammu and Kashmir Satya Pal Malik. Monks performed at the monastic courtyard around the central flagpole, dancing to the tunes of the monastic orchestra. Ladakh ke sanskriti ko leke, Ladakh ke alag alag riti rivasam ko leke, bahut sare rich culture ko yahan pe ham exhibit karte hain. For me, it's a great opportunity to see this uh, culture, uh, beautiful, beautiful people around here, the local. And uh, of course, uh, for me, that there is a second side uh, of it, uh, like a spiritual one. Ladakh, that was last month announced as a union territory by the government, is home to Indus River rafting, the highest river rafting point in the world, and numerous Himalayan tracks. Ladakh's Buddhist monasteries and shrines, along with local vibrant festivals, are also religiously revered and popular in cultural tourism. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India-Russia exchange 15 documents to boost bilateral cooperation. India-Pakistan failed to finalize agreement on Kratharpul Pilgrim Corridor. And UN envoy calls for end to violence in Afghanistan. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.